It's the most wonderful time of the year, and we're so glad you joined us today for the Accelerate Church broadcast with Pastor Jeremy File. Today, he's ministering on the real meaning of Christmas. Well, we don't want to miss it. Let's jump right into it now. The Bible's pretty clear. We ought to celebrate the King has come. Yeah, we ought to celebrate it. People say, well, Christmas is pagan in its roots. And if you listened this morning to the Kingdom Keys Network, you heard Pastor Ricky explain to you why it's really not wise to go back and say, well, I'm not going to celebrate it. This is a time to shine your light bright because overall our culture is open to hearing the message of Jesus coming this time of the year. Lots of people are dealing with lots of different emotions and feelings this time of the year. And you don't know what everyone's been through, but I just know this. The other night, I uh, came across someone, and I said, well, are you willing to, to help me with this? I was, was wanting to just purchase. I was in the airport. I wanted to just purchase a water. And uh, the, the lady said, well, I'll help you. Too bad you're not ordering some alcohol. And I said, well, I'm a preacher. I don't drink. She said, well, the preachers can drink. Jesus turned water into wine. <laughs> now, I was in a hurry, okay, just so you know, because... Gary to text me, we're already loading up, Pastor. I said, okay, I'll be right there. So I didn't have time to preach a sermon. So I let my tip do the sermon for me. And I said, well, I said, I just need a bottle of water. She said, it's been so slow this Christmas season. I was really dependent on, on it being busier. I said, well, I guess tonight's your night because I happen to like to tip. How much is that water? Did you, would you believe that was a $4 bottle of water? almost thought I was at a sporting event. And I said, you know what? And I don't believe this is my reward because I'm not looking for a reward from telling you this. I'm just telling you what happened. I said, let me say, I gave her a $25 tip. And before she could see it, I already was walking off because I had to go load up on the plane. So she knows I'm a preacher from Texas. That's all she knew. She said, I hear her back there, what? What? I said, Merry Christmas. She said, thank you, real loud. And I said, Lord, use that. Send now a labor across her path. She lives in another city. She's probably never going to be right here. I might never see her again in my whole life. But you know, God can use something that simple. Something that simple. And all I'm saying is this time of the year, you might be shocked at how open people are because you don't know what they're going through. She was going through a hard time. She let me know that in just a couple seconds, right? You don't have to sit there and be a rocket scientist and try to figure out what all people are, just listen and ask the Lord. If you've been prayed, prayed up, studying, you're going to be ready. You're going to have an answer. You're going to have something you can do. And then I pray, Lord, use that. Send someone across her path. And then she's going to think, there was a preacher that did this. Wow. Why? Because people this time of the year are more open, especially if you aren't stingy. You're dismissed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I thought that's pretty good. You needed to hear that. Go to Luke chapter 2. Say, thank God for the worm. There's so many details in the Christmas story that's recorded in the Bible that are powerful, powerful truths. And there's a man named Simeon I want us to read about this morning. Go to Luke chapter 2 and verse number 25. Aren't you thankful for the Word of God? It says, Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was a just and devout. This, this man was just and devout. So what does that tell you? That tells you he wasn't like everyone in his culture. Did you catch that? He was just and devout. He was right. He wanted what to do what was right. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. That's Jesus. Isn't that something? And the Holy Spirit was upon him. Well, now, we have something really in common with him. We're waiting on the return of Jesus for the catching away of the church, and the Holy Spirit is supposed to be filled and upon us. Isn't that something? So we should relate to this guy. It had been revealed to him, verse 26 says, by who? The Holy Spirit, that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. We have that in common too. Let me tell you, you're not supposed to die without coming and receiving the Lord's Christ. This is a term, the Lord's Christ, specifically referencing Psalms 2.2, which lets me know that Simeon was a word man. He knew what the Bible said, because Psalm 2.2 already existed in his day. What this literally means, the definition of the Lord's Christ is the Messiah, the Lamb of God. 
So thank God there was someone alive that was looking for the Lamb of God. Mm. To us, it's also been given that we should not see death. I already said this, but I I like to sometimes read it directly out of my notes because the Holy Spirit many times gives me the notes to tell you. So we have been given that we should not see death until we see the Lamb of God and understand why that matters. And that name specifically, the Lamb of God matters. Without the Lamb of God, you and I would have no hope. You and I would have no shot at heaven. It's just, it's just the truth, and that's kind of a harsh reality. In other words, there's nothing you could have done to have earned it. But the Lamb came and shed his blood, and that's why we celebrate. And that's the real meaning of Christmas. Verse 27, let's keep reading the story. Luke chapter 2, you glad you're here this morning? So he came by the Spirit into the temple. Now, this is, I find very interesting. The Holy Spirit will always lead you to go and assemble with other believers. Some things with God never change. And if you'll uh, take the book that I've given all of you as a gift, if you don't have it and you're a partner of this ministry, tell them at the desk in the lobby, we'll get it in your hands. You need this book about parachutes for sheep. And I love my friend, Pastor Chris McMichael, went into the church history, and he showed you that the whole idea that we come and assemble was from the Jewish people that would come and assemble at the temple. Because there's some things of God that never change. You need to come around others that believe and gather around the Word so you can hear this Word so greater understanding can come to your life so you know what to build your life on and what foundation to do. Otherwise, you're going to build it on sand. If you build your marriage doing it the way you think is right, it's on shifting sand. And when the whirlwind comes and visits your marriage, great will be the ruin. And that's what's sad is I can tell you this now. And if everything looks good now, then the whirlwind hadn't come. But when the wind's blowing, what are you anchored to? Oh, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'm telling you, I'm going somewhere this morning. I'm, I'm excited. i got to preach, get out of my own way here, and let you hear this word from God. <laughs> Look at this. He came by the Spirit into the temple, Luke 2, 27. If you're listening by radio, get your Bible out. Those of you streaming, you better look it up. And those of you here, too. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, Simeon took Jesus up in his arms, and he blessed God, and he said, Lord, now you're letting your servant depart in peace according to to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. Somebody say glory. glory. Which you have prepared before the face of all peoples. But wait a minute, not all peoples knew that he was here. Not everyone was looking. Sounds like our day. Not everyone was following the Holy Spirit's leading. But he was, so he could see what others couldn't see. Wow. Wow. What could he see? A light, verse 32, Luke 2 is where I'm reading. To bring revelation to the Gentiles. That's worthy of you raising your hand and saying, thank God. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles. And the glory of your people, Israel. And Joseph, verse 33 says, and his mother, Jesus' mother, marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Why? Let me pause there and say this. Because this was God speaking through Simeon. This wasn't just old Simeon with some delusion he's speaking from. He's speaking by the Holy Ghost. He's prophesying. Verse 34, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Boy, those are powerful words. Isn't it amazing that the Lord Jesus is the object of hatred by so many people in so many nations, even to this day? It's very common for wicked people to use his name for a curse word. It's very common for wicked people to oppose and despise the Lord Jesus and mock and ridicule those that follow him. 
Oh, I don't know what world you're living in, but all it took for Aaron and I, as you've heard me say before, was joining a bowling league one night. We didn't ever even went and competed. Because we decided to go with some of our Christian friends, and one guy in the back over there drinking a whole jug of beer says, if you're scared, go to church. <laughs> and I thought, maybe this bowling league isn't for me. If you're scared, go to church. I thought, Lord, give him a glimpse of hell. He'll come running. Wow. If not a glimpse of that, a glimpse of what's coming on the tribulation period with 100-pound hailstones falling. You don't want to catch one of those in the head, do you? You wouldn't want to catch a baseball size one in the head. And that's only, what, five pounds? Imagine a 100-pounder falling, what damage that would do. Wow, that's coming on this planet. Uh, don't be here for that. Go ahead and make plans right now to discover the real meaning of Christmas and follow why Jesus came and why we even celebrate. Do you have plans on Christmas morning? Well, make for sure you're not alone and join us here at Accelerate Church on Sunday, December 25th for a special Christmas service. It's happening at 10 a.m. and it will be for the entire family. We'd love to have you join us for our special Christmas Day service. I came to preach to you this morning and exhort you and tell you, don't ever stop following the Lord for anyone or for anything or for any word that anyone says against you. Folks, we're too close to the end to give up now. We're too close, man. We're here. I'm telling you. It's just like I was telling some folks last night, some staff that we were celebrating Christmas with, and I said, let me tell you, I ran track in high school, and my coach told me, he said, when you run that mile, you leave some gas in the tank for that last quarter mile. And you, got, get, you make that last turn, you better have something left, and you better really give it everything you have. And so I would always do that. I told him, oh, Coach, if I do that, people start out so fast. He said, yeah, but they haven't been taught to pace themselves. But let me just tell you this, the way this works. Here I've been called for such a time as this, and so have you. And I thank God I was born, I can't help who I was born to, born to a man that had insight beyond just his generation and his life. And he handed me the baton when he didn't have to. And I'd grab that baton by faith. I didn't have to pry it out of dying hands. He's sitting right here taking notes this morning. I grabbed that and I said, let's go. Why? We're this close to the end. And God has called us to be unified and to be looking for his return. Now, hey, I know it makes this sound crazy, but just go ahead and call us some simians in our generation. We just happen to have a little more insight for whatever reason. I'm not cocky about it or arrogant, but let me tell you, the king is coming back, and it's as sure and more sure than him coming that first time. Go back to verse 20. i got to stay on point this morning. i got something to deposit into you that's going to help you. I, I believe it in Jesus' name. Say it. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. Acts 28, 20. I want to emphasize this. Paul said, for this reason, therefore, I have called for you to see you and to speak with you because for the hope of Israel, I'm bound with this chain. And there's some revelation right here. The hope of Israel is actually the hope of the world. The hope of Israel is actually the real meaning of Christmas. What am I talking about? Well, here it is now because this baby was born. There's hope where there could be no hope. Why? Because Jesus is the Lamb. Let me show it to you in the Word. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Glory to God. I'm stirred up about this. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 11. I have it on the screen. It says, Therefore, remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh. Now wait, 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 wait. Just that term alone lets you know you're not supposed to still operate like someone who's not inside God. And God inside you. You're in, in communion with him. You're in covenant with him. You're in relationship with him. You're not supposed to be like you were before you came to Christ. You see, when you're born again, you cry out to God. He gives you a brand new spirit. Brand new. Hey, Amen. All things have been made new. But then you got your mind that you're going to have to keep it washed. You're going to have to keep it clean. Yeah. Heard a guy on... On Christian television, this was not Christian TV, it was a Christian program on television, and he was a window cleaner talking about windows. And I could relate to it because just the other day, we had a little rain, praise God for the moisture, and I have a dog that loves the water. 
He'll, he'll get all dirty, you know, and then he'll come up and he'll just like rub all over. He's like a sponge, you know. He's real, we call him Prince. He's real fluffy. What kind of dog is he? The doodle thing. So he's real fluffy, got hair everywhere. So when he gets all, when he gets all wet, he loves to just do like this all over our window. And I'm telling you, it's like a big mop. And it's filthy. So I had decided I'm going to clean that window. So I went and cleaned it. Well, then the sun comes out in a little bit, and there was more light on that window than was there before. I thought I'd just cleaned it, but I looked, and it was filthy again. I said, I just cleaned that. I thought I had cleaned it, but it wasn't, the light wasn't shining bright. It was cloudy when the sun had first come up. But when the sun popped out and shined right on that, I was sitting on the inside, and I, looked, and I was like, that window looks filthy still. Now, he hadn't come back and rubbed up on it again. It just, I thought it was clean, and it wasn't clean. Because light revealed what needed to happen. So here's the catch. With the light of the world coming to the planet, making a way, it exposes those that think they're all right, but they're not all right. Well, it looks good, but not in the light it doesn't. You once were Gentiles in the flesh. Not still. And it says here in Ephesians 2.11, who are called, look at this, uncircumcision. Why does this matter? Because circumcision, uncircumcision, is all covenant talk. Circumcision was a sign of the old covenant. I'm not going to get off into what all that is and what all it means. It's an interesting study to do sometime, but that's not our purpose today. I just want you to know that those that are called uncircumcision by those that are called circumcision, made in the flesh by hands. In other words, let me translate that for you. People that said, I'm in covenant with God. You're a Gentile. You're outside of covenant with God. Now, you, that's who you were. But now, look at verse 12, Ephesians 2. At that time, you were without Christ. Being aliens from the, I got, I got my now ahead of myself here. At that time, you were without Christ. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Strangers from the covenants of promise. Having no hope and without God in this world. But now you're not like that, are you? Why? Because the king has come. So I'm going to reverse this, and we're going to, we're going to read verse 11 and 12 together because you've got to catch this. Therefore remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called circumcision. In other words, the Jewish people are saying, wait a minute, you're not in covenant with God. Right? At that time you were without Christ. Get this. Outside of covenant, you're without Christ. God only relates to humans according to covenant. If you're not in covenant with him, you are outside of Christ. Also, you're an alien, not a weird space-looking creature. That means you're a foreigner from the commonwealth of Israel. Wow. Strangers from the covenants of promise. Having no hope. Say no hope. And without God in this world, wow. This describes every human who's not discovered the real meaning of Christmas. What am I saying? We've been given the ultimate gift. And that baby born shows us a mark in history where heaven itself celebrated. Hey, there's goodwill toward man. Now God has made a way of covenant where there was no way to anyone but a Jewish person. That gift is covenant with God. Do you have plans on Christmas morning? Well, make for sure you're not alone and join us here at Accelerate Church on Sunday, December 25th for a special Christmas service. It's happening at 10 a.m. and it will be for the entire family. We'd love to have you join us for our special Christmas Day service. True love is a covenant. See, I'm just going to be honest. Until you go ahead and draw the line and sand, make a covenant... There's not really real love being demonstrated. And God, I swear I get this, you know. He's the one that said, I'm going to make the ultimate commitment. I'm going to give my life. And I never, ever will forget this as long, as long as I live. One day, I didn't hear anybody preach this, but I was just reading my Bible. And I saw Matthew chapter 7 where Jesus said, many will come to me in that day. And he'll say, I never knew you. And then he says, few there be that find life. That's what he said, few. And then he gave it all for a few. 
As I realize, Matthew 7 is before the crucifixion. So ahead of time, he said, many will think they're right on the day of judgment, which is past the crucifixion, past the open door of them to come into the kingdom. They think they're going to stroll up and say, hey, Lord, Lord, look at everything I did. And he says, I never knew you. So he died knowing many would do that and few would be saved. What love this is. It'd be one thing to die for all the humanity that know no one's going to die. But I tell you what, there's a lot of people living outside of covenant. Have you looked around? There's a lot of people this time of the year in particular, they're living hopeless. We're supposed to be carriers of hope. Why? Because we're covenant people. Jot this down. Covenant and hope are interchangeable. Covenant and hope are interchangeable. I have this on the screen if you want to write this down. Covenant actually produces hope. That's what it does. Covenant produces hope. I'll just tell you, I thank God I found someone that was willing to enter into a covenant, a lifelong covenant, as long as we both shall live with me. And if you do it God's way, the more years that tick by, the sweeter it gets. When all hell seems to be breaking loose in your life, if you will keep your hope in your covenant, you're going to turn around and you're going to watch all of heaven break loose. I better say that again. I don't think you're quite ready for that. You're still trying to jot things down. When all hell seems to be breaking loose, this is in any area of life. When hell's breaking loose, if you'll keep your hope in your covenant, you're going to end up watching this thing turn and all heaven breaking loose. Glory to God. When we have a promise, we have hope. That's why it's written about Abraham in Romans 4.18, who contrary to hope, in hope, believed. What does that mean? Well, if hope and covenant are interchangeable, he was living and in the natural, he had not one thing to go on that he's going to have a baby, but he had a covenant. So contrary to natural hope, in hope, he believed. What does that mean? It means he said, I've got a covenant. Yeah, but you're about 100 years old. You've been believing God for 25 years. Your wife never did give you a baby. Now she's about 90. Oh, contrary to that, I've got hope. Why? Because I've got a promise. I've got a promise. Look at your neighbor and say, I've got a promise. <laughs> Let me tell you, Abraham had a promise. You've got a whole lot of promises. So what happened? He became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. Let me tell you this. When you know what was spoken, then you always have hope. And the only time you feel hopeless is when you done forgot what was promised. I'm just letting you know there was no hope in the natural for him to have a baby. Yet he, the Lord said, now you call yourself father of many nations. So literally, everywhere he went, this happened right before the breakthrough. He started having to really watch his confession because everywhere he went, he said, hello, I'm the father of many nations. Hello, I'm the father of many nations. Howdy, I'm the father of many nations. Anyone that looked at the natural said, where are your babies, father of many nations? Because in the natural, there was no hope. Maybe there's something in your life today that you think there's no hope. Well, let me tell you something. If you'll start to dig into your covenant and you say, hey, I'll see what was spoken by the Lord. You're believing God for children? Children are a gift, a heritage from the Lord. They'll be like all the plants all around my table. Now, I'm walking in that reality, but that wasn't always my reality. Hey, uh, yeah, you're that, you're that guy that has seven kids. <laughs> yeah, I had to stand on the word for them. And according to what was spoken, that's what I'm walking in. The doctor said, don't get your hopes up. That's what he told us. Those are his exact words. Don't get your hopes up. Hold up. I've got a promise. So contrary to that hope you're talking about, in hope I'm going to believe. Because I've got a covenant. Say it. I have a covenant. Have a covenant. Hopelessness is the result of no covenant promises. Anyone that's hopeless doesn't know what's been promised. 
This is why we've been charged from the light of the world to shine the light to the world and let them know you're hopeless, there's still hope. You're still breathing, there's still hope. Say it, there's still hope. I like Romans 12, we see in my Bible, in the margin, it says, the marks of the true Christian, mark, uh, mark this down, Romans 12, 9, Romans 12, 9, it says, let love be without hypocrisy, abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Verse 10, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor, in honor, giving preference to one another, not slandering one another, not lagging in diligence fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Do you see this? This is what God's wanting. Someone fervent in spirit. Someone who's in covenant with him. Let me just say this. If you're going to know what's in the covenant, you're going to have to have some urgency, some fervency about you. Not lethargy. But I don't know how it's going to work. Get in your covenant. Verse 12. Rejoicing in hope. Remember, covenant and hope are interchangeable. This is what led me down this journey. The real meaning of Christmas is hope to the whole world. Covenant is now available. And I should rejoice in hope. I should rejoice because I have a covenant with God. Yeah, well, I've heard that before. Well, what's wrong with your rejoicer? Let's get that fixed. You ought to rejoice. What does that mean? Oh, I better dance. Oh, I better spin. Oh, I better at least smile. I preached it at chapel. Don't make me do it right here in main service. Rejoice means to show an expression of joy. I'm going to give you an opportunity. I'm going to do my best to stay up here and not come down there and stare right in your mug. But I want everyone right now to smile. Okay, just like I thought. One more, one more shot. Everyone smile. Don't make me come down there. Everybody smile. Let me see you smile. Let me see you smile. That's it. That's, that's all it takes to rejoice. You guys, you guys smile. Oh, Johnny T got a smile. I knew he would. You got a smile? You got an expression of joy? You got a covenant with God? No, no. We should not be like that. We should look like we're sucking on lemons. You got to come to God. I know, brother, but life is tough. Your covenant promises will get you through any tough time you ever go through. Well, that concludes today's broadcast, but it is not the end of Pastor Jeremy's sermon or sermon series on the real meaning of Christmas. You can find all of that online at our website, acceleratechurch.cc. There on the media tab, you'll find all the sermons Pastor Jeremy's preached. And hey, if you're in the local area, just come hear them in person. We're here Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. And we'd love to have you.